Wow, I have so many great things to show you. I know that the show and the tell is the best part because it's so much fun and I know you guys love seeing what I get in these uh, thrift store rummages, all the vintage treasures that I find. So let's just skip to it today. I have jewelry, I have sewing books, sewing things, more books, clothing, clothing, clothing. Okay, let's, let's just skip straight into it. Welcome back my lovely ladies and gents. Thank you for joining me today. I have a vintage thrift haul. If we haven't met yet, my name is Evelyn Wood and here on this channel we do everything vintage sewing and fashion and today is thrifting. Now I like to do these videos because, I mean, show and tell is fun. And I know that you guys though get so much inspiration and it's so great to see the second hand and vintage treasures that are out there when you see other people's like what they found, their treasures, it inspires you and it gives you the, the mindset to kind of look at things differently. And uh, using second hand items is one of the best ways that we can be more sustainable in our fashion and the way that we do things. So this is why I love love to share these hauls with you because I know you enjoy them so much. So I have a, a number of things. Uh, this is still some things that I would saved up. I kind of split my last haul um, short and still had a few things from that. And then I've been to a book fair and a huge big $2 thrift store sale since then. So I have a lot of things here. Let's get straight into it. I have, let me start with some jewelry and small things and some sewing uh, bits and pieces and then I'll go into I've got some great vintage sewing books that I found at the book fair and then I have all of the clothing so first up I have this gorgeous like emerald green silk scarf I love it is perfect I found this beautiful necklace at a thrift store a little while ago it's gorgeous like really heavy glass crystal beads I just love it. It's been sitting here waiting for me to show you. I don't know what uh, era, maybe, I don't know, maybe 60s, I, d I don't know. Just divine, I can't wait to wear this one. And I came across this uh, funny big beaded necklace, but I thought it might work as a kind of trim on a neckline of a dress or something, even better than just as a necklace, like using it as a trim. So I picked that up, I think it was probably 50 cents or something, so I decided to, and it's come with some hair, of course. Okay, a few of these things were gifts uh, from my mum who'd gone shopping and likes to pick me up little things. This one here is a little brooch, actually it would go great with this outfit I've got on now with the blue, it needs a little bit of a, a clean. Um, fabulous little dress clip. I love these for scarves, you can put on collars, necklines, they are really versatile so I always pick up those when I can. Um, some uh, earrings, yellow and some black and a little gold beaded bag. And also these two great little uh, diamante brooches, probably 50s, 60s. I love, love, love these. Again, mum got me these. I have managed to find a few little haberdashery items, some vintage buttons, uh, the green ones, fabulous. Uh, whenever I see these kinds of things in colors like this and unique buttons, these ones are glass as well, these clear ones, I have to get them because if you're ever looking for a green button, you know you never find one when you go looking for it. So I always pick them up when I see them. I found a couple of sets of the overall clasps. Uh, I might do another overall refashion at one time. So it's good to have these on hand. If you didn't see that refashion, it's where I took an oversized uh, men's a mechanic style overall jumpsuit and transformed it into sort of a 1940s style, uh, you know, overall set. So cute. I'll link it up here if you haven't seen that video yet. Uh, also, some vintage little like uh, Chinese frog closures, like the little knots. I love them. So great for the little sewing stash because you never know when you're going to need something just like this. Oh no, I've taken this one for the first time out of the packet and I'm left with like all the sort of fluffy residue on it. I actually, actually be degrading, which is a bit sad. Okay, I might have to check those ones before I actually put them in my stash because unfortunately they might not be any good anymore. And a little vintage packet of 
sort of uh, bra keepers. So they're little ribbons and snaps that are designed to go around um, straps that loop around your bra strap and sort of hold it in so your garment stays over your bra strap. Saves me ever having to make them myself if I need some. Now I'm not usually one for rickrack too much, but look at this. Oh my, this is the most fantastic rickrack I've ever seen in my life. I, it's obviously vintage, I wouldn't know how old. This is going to be fantastic on top of like navy, I'm seeing, seeing sailor style uh, things with this or something like that. It is beautiful. So of course I got the entire thing. I think it was only $2, so it was a really good find that one. I've also found some uh, glass beads. These, this is a whole container. I've got black and uh, clear in this little bag here. I, they're very, very well priced for glass beads. I do have plans to do some beading and, and whatnot on different things. So of course I can't pass up such a great price on glass beads that I would buy in the future. So why not get them now secondhand at such a great price. These two delightful patterns have come into my possession. I have some fantastic 1940s slacks and a little 1950s slip, so always good for the pattern collection. Also two glorious 1930s knitting books have made it into my possession. Now I don't usually get knitting books too much, but these are just divine. The pictures in these are incredible. I mean, I want everything in here. So these are the kind of books that make me want to take up knitting, which at some point, sometime in the future, I'll take up knitting. But I think I have enough hobbies at the moment. So one of my favorite events of the year is the Lifeline Book Fest. It is this enormous, enormous, it takes up the entire exhibition hall uh, and it's just full of secondhand books run by Lifeline. Now, if you are in Australia, they do this fair in pretty much every city and even country towns. So check Lifeline Book Fest because you might have one near you. I managed to find quite a number of sewing books this time. Let's just start with the very best. Okay, I am delighted to find the Better Dressmaker from, okay, no copyright, but judging by the pictures, early 30s. This book is in quite good condition and it uh, goes through the whole lot of dressmaking. So cutting fabric, taking measurements, patterns, how to actually sew the things. You know I love these as references and I highly recommend that you look out for these. The, like they just show you how to do things in such a beautiful way and I love finding how they used to do uh, dressmaking and finishings and all of that sort of thing because it gives you so much more idea of how you can do your things at home as well. This one was a fabulous find. Another great vintage book was The Principles of Garment Cutting from 1954. I just looked. This is a sort of pattern cutting book, what they call pattern making essentially. It goes through drafting and again, I love to see these particular ones for pattern drafting. It gives you the reference of the shapes that you should make to create an authentic, say, 1954 dress silhouette. Managed to score a few of these. This one is fantastic. This is a McCall's How to Fit book. Judging by those leotards from the 80s, maybe the 70s. Oh, 76. Okay, so this is fantastic. It's got illustrations. This is the fitting problem that you're having. And then this is what you need to do to your pattern to solve it. So simple, right? I love seeing through, you get so many ideas. There's never any one way to do it. And I love seeing how they lay it out because it makes, uh, it gives me ideas of how to explain things to my students and such a great reference. If you ever come across something like this, definitely pick it up. All right, this one shows how much of a sewing nerd that I am. This is a textbook on textile fabrics and their selection. So this is like, I remember having these in fashion college and I actually loved the uh, classes on textiles because I don't know why, I'm a bit of a sewing nerd. So this is, this is a textbook that someone would have had in fashion college. This is probably from the seventies, but it literally has like everything about how fabrics, fibers, yarns, how they're all made, what the difference is, cross-sectional views of the fibers and what they look like on the inside. Total fabric nerd here. So I love these. I loved classes in high school. I always get these. This is, if you ever come across these, these are how 
you will learn about fabric, about fibers, about how they're made, how to handle them, what they are. These are the Bibles. This is literally the kind of like fabric Bibles, these ones. It's very sciencey. I mean, we're talking like microscopic cross-sectional views of fibers, but okay, a few modern books. Let's go through these a bit quickly. Singer tailoring. How could I leave that behind? This one looks fantastic. So it is a whalebone to see through a history of body packaging. So it's just kind of like going through um, women's underwear through the decades. So it has a lot of history about corsetry and just how it's changed. So I love, love this sort of thing. These two here by the same author, Couture Sewing Techniques, uh, making the Chanel cardigan and just Couture Sewing Techniques. This is a modern book that I definitely love. It just goes into finer detailing. I mean, who doesn't want to know the Chanel jacket secrets? Yes. And another one I found, uh, Fast Fit, easy pattern alterations for every figure. Again, going in really, really nicely. This is the fit issue you have. This is what you should do to your pattern to fix it. I love how they've actually put the pictures of the patterns and what it looks like in real life, the changes. So good. Oh, and one more, it's missing its cover. But uh, this is a new book, but it's called uh, Overdressed. I've been, this has been on my reading list for a long time. So it's about fast fashion, modern fast fashion industry. So I'm delighted to actually get this one and finally read it. Okay, let's get on with the clothing. Recently, I was lucky enough to go to a thrift store that was having a $2 sale so that everything in there was $2. It was fantastic. It's kind of thrifter's dream, right? So I kind of went to town and got a lot of things. Not all of this is from there, but the majority of it is. Let me start you off with this hat. I'm so excited. It is winter for me, but look at this. It actually has wire in the brim so I can actually flip it up. All of my floppy hats are like this. Like, like, and I, They've all flopped down and I can't see them anymore. It takes like one wear and they seem to flop. So having actual hat wire in here, I'm so excited for this for summer. And of course, red is the perfect color for me. Okay, at that $2 sale, I said I went a little bit crazy and I got a ton of men's suits. Lots of different men's suits. I'm not gonna show you them all, just some. And basically, they're for a upcoming refashion projects that I have in mind at $2. It was definitely the time for me to get into this uh, project that I have in mind. Obviously it's regarding with men's suits. It's no secret. Sounds like I'm giving all my secrets away, but it is something that will come to uh, vintage sewing school. So I need lots of practice ones so I can get it perfect for you guys. That's why I needed lots of them. I got a few men's shirts, of course, because I always need these for my workshops that I'm running, uh, refashioning workshops they all do with men's shirts. The one men's product that I did get that I will show you is these here. These are truly authentic vintage men's pants. Now, I do not know anything about men's wear, really, to know the date of these, but these are quite old. Um, so at the back, they have sh they're have they shaped. They even have the uh, little waist back band to tie it in a little tighter because they come up above the waist with the buttons for your um, braces to go on. They're fantastic. They're lined with a silk or, or rayon. The wool is so nice. There's just a few little holes. Now these, of course, I found in the fancy dress section. Yes. That is one of my big secrets. I have thought about doing a video on my top sections of the vintage stores, uh, of the thrift stores to find vintage items. That is one of them in the costume section. Uh, so no, these, these fit me, but they're not supposed to fit me the way that they fit me because these are men's. But these will be staying, I think, as they are. And I will be using these as reference because I really want to recreate this, uh, this waistline, this tailored waistline with the back coming up with the, to put the braces on and everything. I. Uh, love these. And if you are more uh, apt at menswear than me and can put a date on those, I would love to hear your thoughts. I always love to get like 70s, 
80s, 90s wool skirts. This one is beautiful. It's a lovely charcoal gray with some pleats. I think these uh, types of skirts in all colors just work so well for just everyday vintage looks. Style them up with a blouse, a few little accessories, and they're the easiest thing to get the like beautiful vintage look from. So I love, I always pick up those wool skirts when I find them. I'm always welcoming more red into my wardrobe. This burgundy little, little, little knitted, knitted jumper is lovely for me right now. I'll be definitely wearing this because it is quite cool at the moment. Cool for me, that is. I know you, most of you guys are in summer now and enjoying the beach, but uh, I'm enjoying the coolness. Now, I picked this out of a garage sale uh, a little while ago, this one. So look at this, this is beautiful bright red linen, uh, half, half circle skirt is just divine. There's only one problem. Yeah, it, it only fits about halfway around my body. <laughs> so uh, that's no problem. I'm going to uh, fix this one easily because it's quite long. I'm actually going to sort of lengthen it by taking down the the waistband. I also came across this oh, I love. It is a silk cotton. Look at it. <gasps> Beautiful, right? Has that sort of teens look to it. Oh, adorable. There's a few little changes I'm going to make to this uh, though. Like these sleeves. What is these little button up things? Oh, I hate them. So actually there's a few of these that I'm planning to do some uh, like quick fixes, like a thrift it, fix it type thing. I don't think that the full refashion belongs in a thrift or vintage episode because it's just a little quick thing. Uh, but I know you guys want to see that sort of thing. So I'm actually planning on doing, um, there are going to be some of them I include probably in the next um, coming few weeks. So stay tuned for a sort of quick fix, uh, thrift it, fix it video featuring some of those if you're interested. I found this one a little while ago. Uh, it's been waiting. This is a gorgeous rain on uh, dress. So it's got that really nice heavy drape to it. These are all of my colors, of course, all of them all together. Now this one will be a refashion. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm seeing a maybe a 1920s dress out of this one, but we'll have to wait and see for that. This one is a little bit unusual. It is a sheer, it's probably really difficult to see, a sheer sort of overdress. Now the hem is really weird, uh, that will be changed. The sides are open, which is a little bit odd, but it has lovely embroidery. As soon as I saw this though, I thought of those like lovely 20s sheer evening dresses that, you know, obviously this will be worn over the top of a slip. So I'm thinking to make a beautiful black 1920s slip for this and to actually sort of bead or embroider or do some further decoration to this embellishment on the front and sort of to, you know, get that feel of that lovely 1920s uh, evening wear look with those sheer styles. But I think that one will be a little down the track because I've got a few here first. I'm always so excited to hear which were your favorite pieces and which ones would you have not left the shop without either. Let me know in the comments below. I always love reading through them. I hope I've inspired you to do a little bit more thrift shopping yourself and potentially, ooh, my mountain is falling. And potentially look at thrift store items in a slightly different light and see what you can find out there. Remember, if you do find things that you're inspired by, by me, always tag me. I love seeing them. Look forward to reading what you liked the best down below. Stay tuned for those quick fixes in a few videos time. I'm not sure how many. And then until next time, bye. I'm in the thrift store today and all of my thrifting dreams just came true. They gave me a shopping cart. Yes, it's all $2 today, so we're going a little crazy.